So this is an overview of the ITTOs for Chapter 7, Cost Management. Before I get started, let me mention that if you're interested, we have lots of free PMP prep materials at projectprep.org. We've got cheat sheets, full-length practice tests, note cards, lots of stuff that should be pretty helpful. Okay, so as a reminder, there's four processes here. Plan cost management, estimate costs, determine budget, and control costs. Three are in planning and one's in monitoring and controlling. So with plan cost management, we're documenting how to estimate and control costs. We're going to talk about the methods and tools we're going to be, be using. And then we're going to estimate costs, approximating the finance of individual activities. How much is it going to cost us to do those activities? And then we aggregate those costs to generate the cost baseline and the determined budget process. And so estimating costs is all about approximating costs of individual activities. And determining budget is adding those up to generate the cost baseline. And then we're going to control costs, monitor project costs, and manage changes at the cost baseline. So let's look at the first process, plan cost management. Again, we're documenting how to estimate and control costs. And here are the ITTOs. We have a project charter coming in because that might have some high-level cost information in it. And then our project management plan, which is going to include our schedule management plan and our risk management plan. So um, in these plan blank processes, like plan cost management, plan schedule management, and so on, the project management plan is always going to be an input, and individual plans are going to be an output, in this case, the cost management plan. And then enterprise environmental factors and organizational process assets. Now the risk management plan might be important because it might include some cost information. We're talking about what risks may impact our project, whether positively or negatively, and then the financial impacts that we may see. We might want to consider that as we're planning how to manage our costs. And then to, um, as we're coming up with our cost management plan, we could use expert judgment advice from those who have um, uh, done similar projects, and then use data analysis and meetings just to come up with some ideas about how we're going to estimate and control our schedule, or excuse me, our costs. And the output is going to be the cost management plan. Okay, now let's look at estimating costs, approximating the finances needed to complete project activities. We're looking at how much is it going to cost us to get the work done. So here are our ITTOs. I'm going to break it down a little bit here. So our project management plan is going to be an input, and the key there is the cost management plan. That's going to be important. The cost management plan tells us how we're going to do this, what method we're going to use, and what tools. You've got some project documentation as well as enterprise environmental factors and organizational process assets. Now when it gets to the tools section, let's focus in on those four key estimating techniques. Here they are. Analogous estimating is using historical data from a similar activity or project using some comparison, some analogy. And then parametric estimating is using an algorithm to calculate cost or duration based on historical data. And the way that I remember this is that there's the word metric in it. It's some uh, quantitative analysis. It's using an algorithm. Three-point estimating is aggregating optimistic, pessimistic, and most likely estimates. And then bottom-up estimating is aggregating the estimates of lower-level components of the WBS, or activities in this case, starting at the bottom and then adding them up together. So with analogous estimating, we might say we completed similar projects in the past. It typically costs this much. It's an analogy. Now with parametric estimating, we might be saying, based on the data we have from a past project, our calculations estimate that it would cost this much. The keyword here being metric. Okay, now let's take a look further down in tools, uh, the tools for this process, estimate costs. And let's talk about cost of quality, what that is. So cost of quality is the efforts to ensure good quality and to address cases of bad quality. We need to consider quality costs as we come up with our cost estimates. So there's four kind of categories of um, quality costs. There's prevention, appraisal, internal failure, and external failure. <laughs> uh, the two on the left are what we call costs of conformance, and the two on the right are costs of nonconformance, and we try to avoid those. <clears throat> so with costs of conformance, the, just the cost to do things right, prevention is building a quality product, doing things right the first time so we don't have defects or quality issues that we have to address. Appraisal is something like inspection. It's ex assessing the quality of something or the, the project or the product as we're getting the work done. 
Those are just costs and conformance, just to ensure we have good quality. But if we don't have good quality, we have these costs of nonconformance. One being internal failure, so they're found by the project team before it makes it to the customer. And that's you know better than the one on the right, the farthest on the right, because we can fix it before the customer sees it. So this is found by the project team. External failures are quality issues that are found by the customer. This is the worst case scenario. So if we're uh, doing work on a project, creating a product or something, and there's a defect, but we don't notice it until after the customer gets into their hands, so they identify it, that's an external failure, and those become very expensive. So prevention, appraisal, internal failure, and external failure. These are the categories of costs of poor quality, or costs of quality, I should say. Now here's just a few types of each of those categories. So in prevention, remember this is just ensuring we have a quality product, and a lot of times we think of it as being before production or bef um, you know, before the project work. We could have training, we could have process documentation, things that make sure that we do it right the first time. And then appraisal, this is, you know, as the project is underway, we could be inspecting the product and testing it. Um, and then internal failure, those are when we identify issues as a project team before it makes it to the customer. We'd prefer that over external failures. Uh, examples of internal failures are things like rework and repairs. We fix it before it goes back to the customer, or goes to the customer. And then external failures is if the issue, the quality issue or the defect is found by the customer. Um, costs that we could ex expect to pay here are things like recall costs, warranty claims, complaint investigations, and then other, other penalties. So we'll talk more about the cost of quality in the quality chapter, but this should hopefully give you a decent introduction. Okay, so back to the ITOs for estimate costs. The key output here is going to be cost estimates and our basis of estimates. Let me explain those for a minute. Uh, cost estimates are the costs required to complete project activities. It could include labor, materials, equipment, services, facilities, and so on. So not just people, but also the materials and, and such. And then the basis of estimates is the detail supporting the cost estimate. It gives us a description of how we came up with that estimate, what assumptions we made, maybe a range of possible estimates too. What's our basis for those numbers? How did we get to those estimates? Okay, so now that we've estimated our costs, now we're going to go ahead and determine our budget. And this is aggregating the costs of individual activities, generate the cost baseline. So here's our list of ITTOs. Um, so on the right we have our project management plan coming in because it uh, coming in because that, that's going to tell us how to determine our budget. We could have project documents and these are things that um, we've already created for the most part, our basis of estimates and our cost estimates. We could have business documents, the business case and the benefits management plan um, because that you know will have some important uh, cost information in it. And then we could have agreements and enterprise environmental factors and organizational process assets. So let me give you an example why an agreement might be important here. Remember, that could, um, could be like an informal handshake even or an email that gets sent from a sponsor or a customer that says, you know, I have a million dollars to work on this project. I'd like to get this, this done. And so sometimes in those agreements, it really has our budget that's available to us. And even though we came up with a cost estimate, maybe there's a pre-existing budget that we have to consider as part of that agreement. And then let's look at some of the tools. Most you may already be familiar with, or maybe not, but um, I want to focus in on a cost aggregation and then historical information review and funding li limit reconciliation. These are things we need to do as we determine our budget. So cost aggregation is just summing the low-level cost estimates of work packages or activities. So just adding those costs up. That's straightforward. Uh, and then historical information review is um, looking at historical data to generate estimates. An example might be if you're on a construction project, there might be residential, um, or excuse me, just residential home construction is based on a certain cost per square foot of space. Maybe we know that based on the area code or the, the area that we're in, um, in the world that on average it costs $200 per square foot for this type of real estate. That might help us as we come up with a budget. Historical information review. And then funding limit reconciliation is, um, is this. When money is being spent you want to ensure you go don't go over your limit. Also sometimes money is given in batches. So 
if our budget for a project is one one million dollars, we need to, and oftentimes we don't get that all at once. We need to understand when we need certain amounts of money. Remember, most money is going to be spent as the work is getting done on the project. So, but we have to be clear um, with those who are providing the funding about when we need what amount. Because if it's a one, again, if it's a one million dollar project, we may not get all of the money at once. That's going to be important. Okay, going back to our ITTOs for this process determined budget, let's look at the key outputs. There's the cost baseline and project funding requirements. So the cost baseline is uh, the approved version of the budget minus the reserve. So if you think about a million dollars being our budget, some of that's going to be our cost baseline. It's our original estimate for activities. And then we also may have added some management reserve. Because on projects, things don't always go as planned. We just don't know in some cases, what will go wrong. We want to have some backup, some revert reserve, um, just in case we get into trouble. So a cost baseline is what we kind of measure ourselves against. But we also want to have some additional management reserve just in case something goes wrong. And if you add those two together, you're going to get your project budget. So it's important to distinguish between what how the budget, project budget, is different from the cost baseline. Now let's talk about the other key output project funding requirements. So these are forecasted project costs to be paid. They're total or periodic requirements. So for example, do you need a million dollars this month and two million, this, uh, two million next month? You have to be clear about what you need, when you need it, if you're not going to get all the funding for the project at the start. Now let's look at the control cost process. So we're monitoring project costs and managing changes to the cost baseline. So here's our list of ITTOs. We're going to have our project management plan coming in because that's going to tell us what our baseline was and where we're start, what we're starting with. And then our cost management plan is also going to tell us how we control costs, so that's going to be important. And so we take that cost baseline, the plan, and we compare that to what actually happened. That's going to be our work performance data. We're tracking how much we spent and when. And then we might also compare it to our project funding requirements. So if we needed or said we needed a certain amount each month to keep the project going, how did that compare to with what we actually received and what we actually spent? So we're kind of just overall comparing what we plan to spend and what we actually spent and how we're, you know, how we're doing. Um, so let's take a look at one tool in particular, Earn Value Analysis. So this is combining triple constraint measurements to assess project performance and progress. So we're kind of looking at the cost, schedule, and scope baselines all at once um, and coming up with um, an integrated baseline. And really what we're asking ourselves is we, have we completed the plan scope within the budgeted cost and time? Think about the triple constraint in project management. It's like we're all we're thinking about those all together and not separately. And then there's also something called the two complete performance index. So as we monitor and manage our costs, as we use earned value analysis, if we do, we might come up with something called the two complete performance index, the TCPI. So really what this um, is asking is if we want to meet our goal, our cost goal, what level of cost performance is needed? So you look at how much budget you have left over and the cost to finish the remaining work, and then you determine, okay, how well do we have to, how efficiently do we have to be spending our money? So if we have $500,000 left in our budget, and we really estimate it's going to cost a million dollars to finish it, we've got a problem. We've got to be much more efficient in how we uh, spend our costs. And then our outputs, like most monitoring and controlling processes, are going to be work performance information, change requests, updates to the project management plan, and other project documentation. There's also going to be cost forecasts. So with um, as we control the schedule and as we control costs, Schedule and cost forecasts are going to be important here. We're predicting how much we're going to be spending or how long things are going to take for the remainder of the project. We're forecasting into the future.